Welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. This is episode 1016 and we're here live in Southwest Florida at the beach. If you are joining me live, please say hello. If you've been crafting, I know I would like to hear about it and so would everybody else. And if you have questions for me, always feel welcome to ask. I know there's a couple of subjects that I somehow mistakenly or whatever uh, got interrupted while sharing and I know there's been a couple of questions about oh can you finish this story and that story so only one of them can I remember this morning and I do want to start with that uh, but if there's something else that I started talking about recently and got distracted for whatever reason and you would like to remind me to finish the story please feel welcome to do so I have set up an umbrella on Dolly the wagon today to put shade on my phone and it is it looks horrible. It's not sitting well and hopefully the wind doesn't knock it over. If it does, you're going to see me running really fast. I'll turn the camera around so you can see it is not set up very well right now. It fell over, uh, but even though it fell over at the last second, I still was able to position it so that it'll. my camera is in the shade even though I'm not. So I do feel like it's a bit of a victory. Oh, no, nope. the camera is not in the shade. If I get it a little closer. Is that one is it? Now it's in the shade, I think. Ah! Nope, not all the way in the shade. How about there? Now it's in the shade. Now it's in the shade. Anyway, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Hope you're having a great day so far. But it's windy here and this I can't decide if the wind's going to blow the umbrella away or just blow it into Dolly. So I guess we'll find out in a few minutes here. All right, good morning, everybody. So glad you could be here. I've missed everyone's names because of my uh, umbrella drama. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Donna, Diane, Lisa, Shelly, everybody whose names I miss. Glad you're here. Hopefully you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. It is uh, episode 1016. Oh, yes, the rejected shawl uh, story. I wish I'd have brought that shawl with me today. It would make more sense if I had it with me. Okay, the first one that I wanted to remind, uh, finish the story about is a story about Martha O'Million or a story related to her. Remember when I interviewed Martha O'Million a few weeks back and we talked about her daughter and the charity she has for her daughter, remembering Maggie. And remember that... Uh, she shared with me a list of red flags. Yes, there's something in the water. I'll talk about that. She shared with me that there, uh, she shared with me a list of red flags to share in the blog post that I wrote for her episode. And uh, this is, so just really quickly, uh, Martha's daughter was uh, a victim of murder-suicide through domestic violence many years ago. And fast forward now to her charity and the fact that we were talking more about awareness of domestic violence to even have the interview. And then after the interview, sharing the blog post, well, a mutual friend of Martha's and mine is, it has, a, has another friend, you know, it's always word of mouth, right? Has another friend whose daughter she feared was in a domestic violence relationship and you know it's so interesting to me that people can you can be inundated with information all day long every day and it's not till you're ready to hear something that you hear something right and so um this mutual friend of ours and this friend of hers who's a mother of a daughter she was concerned about were discussing and she goes you know what i know that this really great list of red flags it's on this other woman that I know's website, meaning me. She says, I'm going to send it to you. Maybe you can send it on to your daughter. Now, this is something that this woman had talked with her daughter about prior to this. The woman sent my blog post with the red flag list to her daughter. Her daughter read it, and it clicked with her. This particular day, this particular link, and reading this particular list on that day, got through to this girl and she left and she left her boyfriend just in time for him to only commit suicide he did not get the opportunity to murder her before he committed suicide 
we saved a life, everybody. Like, you, <laughs> it's stuff like this that makes me, it reminds me that you don't know how you affect other people's lives. And it's so important to just keep going forward, keep spreading positivity, keep spreading joy, keep spreading awareness about when things aren't positive and when things aren't full of joy. Um, it, I got an email about this and I was so blown away. Um, and so I just want to remind you all as well, anytime something comes across your path that you think it might be appropriate to send someone that list, by all means, please, 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 please. You never know whose life you may affect. Yes, exactly, Grace. Yeah, I've had goosebumps every time, ever since I read the email. I've had goosebumps every time I've talked about it. I have goosebumps again telling all of you. Like, um, yeah, sharing makes, a, sharing makes all the difference, Tammy. The more we talk about it, the more we make things aware, the more we stop sweeping things under the rug and talking about things, the better off we all are and the more we can spread the awareness of what is appropriate and what is right and what is proper behavior between people. And um, I am absolutely just completely humbled by this story and I just wanted to share it with all of you because it's so special and also it's a way that I can remind everybody else this worked. If we need to do it again, let's do it again. And if we need to do it a hundred more times, let's do it a hundred more times or a thousand more times. Like, um, I'll bring it up from time to time, but uh, anytime you feel, uh, if you feel inspired to share that list with someone that you think might uh, be, might need to read it, it do it, because it worked. We have a success story. Can you believe that? Like, I'm blown away that we have a success story like that. Um, I mean, I'm like, my eyes are, I'm, it's very overwhelming. And oh my gosh, my heart is just so full of joy and gratitude. So just wanted to share that with all of you. Isn't that special? Okay, next, someone asked what's over in the water. It looks like a log or a rusted barrel. I don't know. So let's see if it's gotten any closer since I got here. And it has not. I just, I can't tell if it's like a rusted barrel or a log it oh it the shape looks too perfect to be a log so i'm guessing it's a barrel i zoomed in as much as i can and you know i just can't see that well myself did i keep it in camera it's funny because when i <laughs> i can't see if it's in camera when i zoom in all right well i tried anyway to answer whoever's question that was I believe <laughs> it's either a barrel or a log, but I don't know. Okay, what was the other uh, subject that I had forgotten to finish? Uh, oh, the rejected shawl. Okay, so I'm sorry I don't have the shawl with me today. Um, unfortunately, it would make more sense if I had it with me, but here's the gist of it. So when I first designed that half circle or U-shaped motif, it was to put it on the frame of an earring. So yes, those are knit and they, I ended up, in fact, you know what I did? I should have brought those today too. I forgot my whole story. <laughs> anyway, so originally they were supposed to be earrings that were stretched out on the frame of a hoop earring. So I've had this idea for stretching yarn motifs onto hoop earrings for years. And I've done it with crochet so many times, as you know. Well, one time I did it with knitting where I did that Pico cast on and then those short row, is it cast on or bind off? Can't remember now. Anyway, I did those moon shapes so that you could slide them onto a hoop earring from the short side so that it would end up dangling down underneath. And that was the original design for maybe, maybe it was even wrapped in crochet. Anyway, it got rejected or it was knitting outside. It got rejected. I ended up doing a crescent shawl with the motif on it instead. And then I ended up reusing the motif again for Motif Magic to do a fuller size shawl, not a crescent shawlette. And then in 80 Handmade Gifts, I used the motif to then do the earrings that I always wanted to do. What are they called? Wow, I really did not come prepared for that whole story today. <laughs> well, you can find them on my website. They might, they're not called the Amy. 
Anyway, it's a pair of knit earrings. And if you have 80 handmade gifts already, you have the pattern. And if you're interested in seeing it, it's a pattern, a standalone pattern on my website too. And if you go to knit patterns and search by jewelry, it probably comes up quickly. Speaking of jewelry, today I am wearing a pair of earrings that I crocheted. This is the chandelier earring pattern, super duper easy to do. And I designed this pattern with um, odd numbers. I designed this pattern with odd numbers so that it would be an easy candidate for adding beads to it. So these are chain three spaces down the center on each side, uh, you know, see how there's chain three spaces here and then here and then here and then here. I did those in odd numbers so that you could put our, it could be Ariana earrings, Judy, I don't remember. Um, you could put a bead in the center chain uh, of each of those chain spaces. And then you could even put a bead in the center of these three and seven double crochet sections. So I did everything in odd so that it would be easy to put a bead in the center of any of them. Someone asked the other day, what kind of beads to you with different weights of yarn? You know what, this is where size does matter, guys. Depending on the size of the hole of the bead, it determines what kind of yarn you can put it on. And honestly, we could talk for a long time about that, and one day I'll bring out samples to show you. But natural beads are often, have often have much smaller drilled holes than manufactured beads. And um, obviously the smaller the bead, the smaller the hole, generally speaking. Sometimes a bead will actually be described as a large hole bead. For example, the large hole pearl beads that I sell on my website right now, until they're gone, um, and they might be gone already, I don't know. They're large enough that you can actually do that technique where you can pull the crochet hook through the bead and pull the yarn through so you don't have to pre-string all your beads for your whole project on before you start. Again, this is a bigger subject, so probably something that would be better suited for a, uh, a longer section or a longer segment with samples or at least some uh, examples. But if anybody has any questions about that, let me know. One bead that would look absolutely, or a couple beads that would look absolutely amazing in these is the Preciosa Crystal beads that I sell on my website. They're four millimeter, and I use those a lot in these ear, in this uh, weight yarn. This is number one fingering weight yarn. I did this with a Be So Fine tidbit. So four millimeter beads would be fine for this. If you were going to use a slightly thicker yarn, let's say like a two, uh, number two sport weight, like Be So Sporty, Be So Luxe, on that size yarn, and even up to number three DK weight, like Be So Baby, I've used six millimeter fire polish beads on that thickness of yarn. And then when I've used beads on thicker yarns than that, I like those large hole beads, uh, the large hole pearls for number four worsted weight and, and that sort of range. Uh, yes. The beaded scrunchie that I did, the sandy beaded scrunchie that I did, was with um, number two sport weight, Be So Sporty yarn, and six millimeter fire polish beads. Oh, that's so sweet, Lori. Yeah, the cooking videos with Marlon were, when he was younger are so cute. Uh, anytime I can get him to stick around for a cooking video, it's so special. Uh, and I realize there's going to be less and less of them as time goes on, but I'm so glad you enjoyed watching that. Uh, I enjoy watching anything when he's younger, <laughs> to be honest with you. So sweet. All right, so I caught up on the rejected shawl slash, or it was a rejecting, rejected earring pattern that then turned into a shawl pattern and then turned back into an earring pattern. And Judy has helped me, and somebody else did, Melanie, I believe. It's called the Ariana earring pattern. And Judy has shared a link here in the live chat. But if you don't want to leave the live uh, stream to go check it out, don't worry. We uh, update the video description at the end of the show with all the show notes and all the links. Thank you, Judy. That's where I was going next. I'm wearing the Demi Crochet Sleeve. I wore a lot today. Uh, on a, on, just on a simple Amazon dress. So the actual dress is a tank top style dress and I crocheted these sleeves and, I, and then I sewed them on. I did not crochet them directly onto the fabric. However you could, uh, I chose to sew these on because I crocheted the motif top down like a top down half circle 
like a mini shawl to make this type of a cap sleeve. And it's kind of got a fluttery cap sleeve effect also. And uh, yeah, is it cute on the dress by itself? Absolutely, but it's a little chilly here today. And so I wanted another layer. Do I have a pattern for Miyuki? I don't know what Miyuki is, or Mukluks. Uh, no, I don't have a pattern for Mukluks. That's one of the patterns that I demonstrated on, or taught on Knit and Crochet Now. You'd have to go to Knit and Crochet Now's website. I believe it might have been season 12 that I taught how to knit uh, on crochet mukluks. You'll have to look on their website though. I do have a blog post for each season of the show on my website, so you could search Knit and Crochet Now. And what I do on my annual blog post when the new season comes out is I share all the projects that are featured on the season, not just the stuff that I did, but the whole show to make it nice and organized. And then I have links back to the show where you can go there and figure out how to watch it or, um, or even just look on your TV. And if you don't have it on your TV, then you have all the information for me to look it up on Annie's website if you want to download an episode or if you want to order the box set or whatever. I like to catalog everything so that you do have an organized place to check everything out. Um, but so far, all of the patterns that I have taught on the show have not been my own patterns. They're patterns from the producer that I share a demo on. I hope that makes sense. If you have more questions about it, please let me know. What other questions have I missed today? Does anybody want to repeat? Uh, Lisa's made several of the demi sleeves. That's awesome. Oh, also, I get questions all the time. Can you make these sleeves longer? Yes. Uh, could you put these sleeves on the bottom of the dress? That's kind of uh, an interesting question. Once you get to these final rounds where there's no more increasing, yes, you could do this stitch pattern for the hem of the skirt. But because they are a hat, I, I, I can't really. It's, I don't know if I can show this while wearing it, and I can't take it off. Um, can you tell that that's a half circle, though? It's a half circle like this. So when we make half circle shawls, we start small and increase out till we get down to the bottom. That wouldn't work for the hem of the dress. You need something worked even, not increasing out to create scallops. Although if you wanted a scallop edge on your dress, you could make a bunch of these and use them as motifs to do that at the bottom of the dress, which is a look too, and that might be really pretty. But if you wanted to extract part of this stitch pattern for the hem, I would say focus on where there's no more increases, like down here. And then from the, like starting here, I would start from that sort of section and work down for your edging on the skirt. Does that make sense? If it does, great. If it doesn't, uh, ask me and I can try to uh, clarify a little more. So one of the things that I also wanted to point out is you know how I talk about adjusting the lengths of your layers and how figure flattering it can be. And so if this dress didn't have the sleeves on it, I would generally speaking not wear the jean vest over it because I think sleeve lengths should be different, especially when you're wearing a shorter layer on the top. I think it's important to adjust. So if, I, if this dress was sleeveless, I would wear a long sleeve jean jacket over it. But because the dress has sleeves, I think a jean vest is more interesting, especially since I wanted to feature the hand, the handmade embellishment on there. So I all I go back and forth between jean jacket and jean vest, or even jackets, long sleeve cardigans or vests, based on how long the sleeves are on my layer underneath. Does anybody have any questions about that? Someone's asking about baby patterns. Yes, we have lots of baby patterns and Judy is sharing a link to that right now. All right, what else? What else do we have questions about? We didn't even get to my regular topic I wanted to talk about today. Let me grab some more stuff. All right, so a couple things I wanted to talk about. First of all, um, most of the yarn has been uh, sold and is sold out now on my website. There's still a few things left. There's few colors of, there's a few colors of Be So Baby, a few colors of Be So Luxe, and there's a bunch of Be So Bear yarn left. 
which is my number two sport weight organic cotton that's super, super soft. And although I know um, it's a great yarn for dyeing, I also wanted to point out that it is really, really beautiful as an undyed natural yarn as well. And so I wanted to remind you of a couple of patterns that I've done over the years in the undyed version of it. So like this, this Lexi washcloth was done in Be So Bear yarn for 80 handmade gifts. So if you have it in that, um, yes, yeah, Scrubby's still in stock too. I don't know, I, I don't have the whole list in my head, but I'm just mentioning that I just wanted to talk about Be So Bear today. But you can definitely go to my website and see what's left in stock. Yes, there's uh, quite a bit of Scrubby left, Be So Bear, and a couple of colors of a couple of other yarns. So this is the Lexi washcloth. It's a corner to corner design. And this is done in Be So Bear, 100% organic cotton. So nice if you wanted to make a spa gift set. I've used it for many bags over the years. Got this little one that I can't remember the name, but I do believe that it's in uh, 80 Handmade Gifts. Then I have this market bag, which has a Pico mesh. Super, super cute bag. And it comes in a couple of sizes on the pattern. And then this one, I made two of this one. I put a handle on one and I didn't put a handle on the other one yet, but this is called the Sand Dollar Bag. And this is the reason why I brought it today. And we'll come back to this one because I wanted to talk about the diamond formation of the motifs and compare it to another bag for a couple of contrasts and comparisons to show you that both patterns can be done in a few ways as well. Uh, and then I have a garment here that I did for Layers Crochet called the Selena Ruana. This is done in Be So Bear yarn as well. And this might end up being one of the candidates that I show you how to dip dye finished garments. I thought it might be interesting to add dye to the bottom edge here and just watch it slow, like just put a little bit in the dye and watch the color slowly climb up and not get to the top to do like an ombre gradient dye to the finished garment. So that might be an experiment we do here in the, uh, in the future. But in the meantime, I have worn this and loved this as an all natural, beautiful, natural, organic cotton color. I can even try it on if you like. So don't feel limited to saying, oh, I don't like to dye. I wouldn't want that yarn. No, you might really love this yarn just in its natural state. I know I do. I've just I've designed with it and knit and crocheted with it many times over the years just in its natural state. I love it. I don't know if I did that right, but might have. Eh, maybe not quite. So you could, it ends up being like a ruana or a vest. I have corset tied the sides, which is an option. You could also belt this and blouse it up. There's a bunch of photos of it on my uh, website so you can see some different ways that I've styled it over the years. You could add buttons, a shawl pin, you could add another corset tie in the front. Like I said, you could belt it. You can leave it open. It's beautiful just worn as a layer like that too, right? easy you make the back and then you come back to the shoulders and work the fronts right off the back super duper easy so yeah so there's just a little reminder that be so bear yarn can also be don't feel limited it's a number two sport weight yarn and I just wanted to remind you don't feel limited to thinking that it's only for dying it's beautiful in its all natural state too okay so brings me back to what I originally wanted to show you this morning was showing you some of the contrasts and similarities between the sand dollar bag and the Lisa Marie bag, okay? So remember we talked about this the other day that these squares are in the diamond formation and how because they're in the diamond formation, in order to get straight edges along the top and bottom, we needed to make triangle motifs, right? And what would happen if we didn't have those triangle motifs there? Well, if we didn't have those triangle motifs there, we'd end up having these points at the top. So think of this in terms of having the points because we didn't add triangle motifs to straighten out that edge. Does that, can you see the difference between the two? And so one of the visuals I wanted, I was hoping that you would get is that you, you could visualize more how that would look as a tank top having straps come up from there, right? And also just a different type of a bag. 
Another thing that I wanted to point between the two of these is either one of these could be the size of the other based on how many motifs you add. So let's, so let's look at this bag big and then let's fold it in half. And if you fold it in half, can you kind of see how if you did half as many motifs, you'd get a different size bag. It's more like a book bag size. And you wouldn't even have to go that long if you didn't want it to. You could make it shorter as well. Or you could do this one bigger and make it a bigger bag like this. But also what I wanted to point out is that when you skip that, those triangles at the top, you have the ability to turn this into a tank top with spaghetti straps, which I definitely want to do with one of these motifs for summer. I don't know which one. And I can't decide if it's going to be a tank top or a tank top dress or both. But uh, I definitely want to explore more garments in that diamond formation of motifs. I have done it. Oh, the pattern name is going to elude me. It is also a number two sport weight yarn pattern. It's something I did in Layers Crochet. It's something I did in Be So Fresh Linen Yarn. And it is a, a wrap cardigan where the motifs are done in the diamond formation as well. They are not the same motifs, Lori. No, these are completely different motifs. This I call the sand dollar motif. Can you see some of the texture of some foundation or some uh, front post double crochets in there to give that radial dimension in the motifs? That's why I called it sand dollar. And this one is completely different motif. Lots of uh, many more rounds in this one. Uh, both beautiful, but they are different motifs and even further uh, vary because of adding color and doing it solid. If you saw this one in a solid color and if you saw this one in a in multicolor, you would see so many other variations as well. If you could see both motifs side by side more similarly, like let's say all in the same color or all in the same colors, you would be able to see those differences better. But I, isn't that fun to compare and contrast the similarities and the differences? so cool and if you did this in a different weight yarn you could make the motifs bigger or smaller let's say you did this in be so easy yarn for an afghan your motifs would be much bigger because you're using a bigger hook and a bigger yarn let's say you did something like this in be so fine yarn uh, to make a little scarf or to make a head scarf and use a much smaller hook you make your motif smaller if you did this in a solid color if you did it in a different combination of colors this is five colors you could do it in two colors and get a different look you could do it and think about this. Let's see how many rounds this is. It's one, two, three, four, five. It's six rounds. Okay. Here's something really interesting to think about too. So six rounds and I did six colors. What if you did six rounds in two colors, for example? Now you still have options. What do you, okay, so you've got rounds one, two, three, four, five, six. Which ones are gonna be which color, right? We did six yarns, six colors, that's easy. And then for variation from there, I did them in opposite directions. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then six, five, four, three, two, one. Now, what if you did rounds one in the first color, then two in the second color, three in the first, four, so A, B, A, B, A, B, you could do. Or what if you did A, 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 B, 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 or what if you did A, 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 B, A, B, see what I'm saying? You have and that's just talking about doing it in two colors. So we have a one color option, we have a six color option, we have a six color option going in two different directions. Then even with two colors, we have options of how often we use each and every color. Then you could also alter the way you do them between the two. And then let's talk about three colors. So then it would be A, B, C, A, B, C, or A, A, B, B, C, C. And then if you did A, A, B, B, C, C, would you do C, C, B, B, A, A on the adjacent ones? This could absolutely be turned into a poncho. Which one? Do you mean this one or do you mean this one? Because in this one, if you just made the front and the back and made an arm a neck hole opening, this could be, yes, the Cora Bolero. That's the one I was talking about, Judy. That's where I did a garment with the diamond shaped motif. Sorry to put you on the hunt, Judy. I just couldn't think of it. So yes, this could be a poncho. This could be a poncho and this could be a poncho too. Any of them could, any of them. And poncho is actually one of the easiest garments to start if you've never done a garment before because there's very little shaping. 
Oh, that's awesome, Faye. So Faye came down to visit me many years ago, or she not, didn't come to visit me, but came to the beach to say hi to me. And it's on episode 145 of the show that Faye was crocheting the sand dollar bag and chatting with me on the beach. That's cool. I forgot about that, Faye. Thanks for reminding us. I'm sure some people will want to go check that out. Where did I put my butterfly clip? Maybe I just set it down. Uh, I hope I didn't lose it. Ah, there it is. There it is. All right. Does anybody have any questions? We talked about a lot today, right? So much. But that's fun. And if you don't remember everything, come back and rewatch it. All right. We didn't see anything to look up in this book today. I'm afraid log slash barrel doesn't apply to Florida nature. <laughs> but we can look up a quote before we go. We'll randomly pick a page. Ah, this one's by Aesop. This is from Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 3. And this quote is from Aesop on page 32. Please all, and you will please none. Oh my gosh, how, how true is that, right? And that can be applied to any facet of your life. <laughs> the more you try to please other people, the more likely you are to please absolutely no one, including yourself. Uh, so always a great reminder to remember that. Boundaries are important in all relationships. Boundaries are not a bad word. All right, does anybody have any last questions? Nope, I don't see any more questions. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the beach, the sound of the waves, all the colors and the scenery all my little demos and chatting with me and everyone else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next episode of The Kristen Omdahl Show. Bye-bye.